engagement. As distances close, radar-based engagement may transition into infrared-based targeting, either low to the ground or among adversarial aircraft within a dogfight. While the radar energy from air defenses can be detected, infrared homing missiles are particularly hazardous to combat aircraft because they offer no warning of being tracked. The only indicator of an infrared homing missile launch is through visual identification, though newer fighters such as the F-35 employ external sensors that attempt to detect launches. Defending against infrared missiles involve a combination of evasive maneuvers and deploying flares designed to mimic jet exhaust, distracting the missile's seeker. However, due to the use of sophisticated signal processing in modern heat-seeking missiles, the efficacy of infrared countermeasures are reduced. Because the reflective behavior of radar isn't as intuitively obvious as optical properties, early attempts at stealth were based on observations of radar on existing designs. It was discovered early on that the shape of an aircraft determined its visibility to radar, its radar cross-section, or RCS. For example, the 1960s-era British bomber, the Avro Vulcan, was observed to have a peculiarly small radar cross-section, despite its large size. Whereas the similarly sized Russian Tupolev-95 long-range bomber had an extremely prominent radar cross-section. Other observations pointed towards the internal construction of the airframe. Certain configurations of internal structure can trap radiation, causing reflections between internal faces until the energy dissipates. This pseudo-stealth technique was implemented on both the A-12 and the SR-71. While these observations pointed designs in the right direction, for truly effective stealth, a better understanding of radar diffraction was needed. The first steps to overcoming this technological hurdle occurred in 1964. That year, Soviet mathematician and physicist Peter Ufimsev published a paper titled Method of Edge Wave in the Physical Theory of Diffraction in the Journal of the Moscow Institute for Radio Engineering. Extending theoretical work published by the German physicist Arnold Sommerfeld, Ufimsev's paper demonstrated the first major breakthrough in the understanding of radar wave behavior. Ufimsev's conclusion was that the strength of the radar return from an object is related to its edge configuration, not its size. His paper also demonstrated the ability to calculate the radar cross-section across a wing surface and along its edge. The implications of this discovery was that even a large aircraft could reduce its radar signature by exploiting these principles. Astoundingly, the Soviet administration considered his work to have no significant military or economic value, allowing it to be published internationally. During that time period, Lockheed's elite Skunk Works design team was working on a stealth proof-of-concept demonstrator called Havblue. The engineering team struggled with predicting stealthiness as the program they created to analyze radar cross-sections called Echo-1 failed to produce accurate results. Dennis Overholzer, a stealth engineer on the project, had read Ufimsev's paper, realizing that he had created the mathematical theory and tools to do a finite analysis of radar reflection. Ufimsev's work was incorporated into Echo-1, allowing for more refined and accurate results. Despite the objection of Skunk Works director Kelly Johnson, the faceted design was chosen due to its predicted effectiveness. The iconic early stealth look was a direct byproduct of the computational limits of computers of the time, which limited Echo-1's ability to perform calculations on curved surfaces. Wooden mock-ups covered in metal foil were constructed and subsequently tested for radar cross-section, confirming Echo-1's predictions. Its stealthiness was attributed to its difficult-to-construct faceted body, jagged edges, use of a wing sweep angle of 72 and a half degrees, and inward canted vertical tails. Known as an edge-aligned plan form, the matching set of angles of the overall shape worked together to reduce radar cross-section. This worked by reflecting and dispersing radar energy away from its source, making it difficult to detect and track. In addition, a simultaneously developed radar absorbent material was applied to the aircraft's flat surfaces. Special coatings were also applied to the windscreen giving them metallic characteristics. 
To reduce its infrared signature, non-circular tailpipes were used to minimize the exhaust cross-sectional volume and maximize the mixing of hot exhaust gases with cool ambient air. It was also made subsonic to prevent detection by sonic boom. It was discovered that rotating components of a jet engine increases radar observability immensely. To counter this, the engine inlets were mounted on top of the wings with the engine inlet being covered by a low radar cross-section grid. During takeoff, top-mounted inlet doors would open to allow more airflow. Because stealth was of the highest priority, the shape of the aircraft made it inherently unstable. A quadruple redundant fly-by-wire control system barred from the F-16 was integrated into the aircraft to give it normal flying characteristics. Despite the loss of both demonstrator aircraft, the aerodynamics and combat usability of the design was further refined. The aircraft was scaled up in size, larger engines were installed, and two internal weapons bays were added. The F-117 Nighthawk was born from these changes, reaching fully operational status in 1983. It was deployed in the 1989 US invasion of Panama, but its capabilities were truly put to the test in Operation Desert Storm. Because the F-117 diverted radar energy away from its source, it was still possible to detect it using passive receivers located at different angles from the radar source. Additionally, its shape was so critical to its stealth that opening the weapon bay doors and not retracting antennas on the surface of the aircraft would significantly increase its radar cross-section. Because of this, operational tactics played a large part of the stealth equation. Missions were designed around avoiding known vulnerabilities. This reliance on tactics to mask its flaws would prove disastrous on March 27, 1999 during the NATO bombing campaign of Yugoslavia. During sorties, F-117 would routinely perform checks of weapon bay doors as they ingress to their targets. Because opening the weapon bay doors would increase the radar cross-section momentarily, this was noted by Yugoslavian Army air defense operators. With this knowledge, anti-aircraft missile batteries were placed at advantageous positions and their radars configured to use longer wavelengths than the F-117 were designed for. The combination of these factors allowed for the successful detection and subsequent shooting down of one of the stealth aircraft. Because the aircraft crashed mostly intact, the event was a blow to the US stealth advantage as the wreckage was reportedly sent to both Russia and China for reverse engineering. By 2008, the F-117 was eventually retired due to its aging design. 